Hi there, it's Gabriel here, SEO manager at Hike SEO. And in this video, we'll be talking about 404 not found, uh, how to avoid, spot, and fix 404 errors. So what you'll learn in this video is what are 404s all about? What are they? Um, basically, when do they actually happen on your site? Um, what are soft 404s and the differences between that and a regular one? why you need to fix them in terms of your SEO performance, why it's important to fix them, how to find them on your site, how to fix them correctly, because there's a lot of ways to incorrectly fix them, um, and also personalizing a 404 page. So what are 404 errors? A 404 not found error happens when a website server can't locate a specific URL or page that is being accessed via the browser or through a hyperlink. So let's say you're surfing the web, you click a link, it goes to a 404 page because you, it doesn't even exist. Or you're typing something in the browser um, and you incorrectly type the URL, again, it's going to go to a 404 page because that page doesn't actually exist. So this URL or link uh, is known in other words as a broken or dead link. So that's just another informal way for it. So here's an example on the hike website. Um, the 404 page looks like this. It also throws an HTTP 404 code as well, just so the browser knows that this is a 404 page. So there are five total HTTP or hypertext transfer protocol error classes. And we'll go through each one. You'll see where the 404 actually sits after this. So there's the 100 codes. These are informational. So they basically tell just some information um, about it. Uh, 200 codes. Uh, these are about success, like a page loads successfully. Uh, 300 codes have to do with redirections. There's different types of redirects. And depending on what exact code it is, it has specific meanings. 400 codes are client-side errors. So this is where the 404 falls in. So it's a client-side error. If you type in a URL incorrectly or you try to visit a page that doesn't exist, that's a client error. It's a client um, fault in that sense. And then there's 500 codes. These are server-side errors. So let's say the server crashes um, or runs out of memory or something like that, then it will throw a 500 class uh, error. So when does a 404 error actually happen? Basically, 404 not found errors happens in a few different circumstances. So firstly, a URL is en incorrectly entered. So you type something and maybe you, you tap the wrong character or you misspell a word or something, boom, it's gonna go to a 404 because that page doesn't exist. A page is redirected to an incorrect URL. That's another thing. So you might have a page, you archived it, you deleted it, and you redirected it to another page, but then that page got deleted or something. Again, it's going to throw a 404 error. Um, a page is deleted or simply just doesn't exist. That's another one. Or a URL is changed without a redirection. So let's say you change the URL from page hyphen A to page hyphen B. Um, but we didn't redirect the old one and there's still links to it or people still remember that as the page, it will throw another 404 error. So a URL is in incorrectly entered. So when a user misspells the URL and that page doesn't actually exist. So for example, if we go to the hikeseo.co slash L-A-E-R-N, obviously that's a misspelling when the intention was slash learn it's gonna flag up as a 404 error. A page is redirected to an incorrect URL. So when webmasters have redirected a page URL to an incorrect URL, maybe it was a mistake, maybe it was supposed to be another page, but that page doesn't exist anymore. There's different reasons behind it. So let's say we have slash on site and it's redirected to slash learn um, slash on sit and that's misspelled but that page doesn't actually exist. Um, a page is deleted. So when a webmaster deletes a page and doesn't update other links on the website that link to that page, um, that's a really common issue, especially if you have a huge site and you have a lot of internal linking going on, uh, then all those internal links are still pointing to the old page, and then that's when the 404 happens. So for example, um, yeah, so the old link from existing back links will still be pointing to the deleted page URL. So you can 
obviously update internal links, but let's say you have backlinks on other people's sites that you can't control or access or modify, then that's a problem because referral traffic um, from people from those sites will land on a 404. And that's, that's not good. That's not great experience. A page URL is changed without redirection. So if a page URL is edited or it's changed for any reason, but the old URL hasn't been redirected to the updated one, uh, that's another common issue. So for example, um, let's say this page learn hyphen SEO, um, that was updated and changed to slash learn because it's easier to remember, it's shorter, but the old URL wasn't redirected, for example. Um, then people visiting that learn hyphen SEO page will get a 404. So what are soft 404s? Because this is something that um, can be quite common and especially with CMSs um, or platforms that don't ha don't handle these automatically. It can be common when you're when you have your own custom platform or a developer who doesn't know what they're doing and doesn't you know the the benefit of adding these error codes. This is what happens. So soft 404s occur when the server doesn't send a 404 error to the browser, yet the page still doesn't exist. So you'll still land on a blank page, but it doesn't flag up as a true 404 error um, in the browser. So it doesn't think doesn't know it's a 404, but in, in all essence and practical purposes, that page doesn't exist. So it is a 404, but the browser hasn't been informed of that by the server. So that's a big problem because um, in terms of, in terms of the, the client server communication, it's important to send the right error codes. So Google still views these pages as 404 errors, um, but they're known as soft 404s. So it's best practice for the server, the CMS, whichever platform you're on to send a 404 code on pages that don't actually exist or don't exist anymore. So why fix a 404 error? Firstly, it improves the user experience. So 404s can really frustrate or confuse the visitors, leaving a negative experience with them. And we've all experienced that in all the years that we've been online, used the web, you click a link, it doesn't load, you're frustrated, you didn't get what you wanted. Um, fixing the 404 ensures that the user finds the content that they intended to find in the first place. It's all about experience. It's all about giving the users what they want when they want it. So 404s, fixing them is incredibly important from a user experience point of view, but also from a backlink point of view and a link equity point of view, because if you don't, if you're pointing to a, a page that doesn't exist, it's not going to pass uh, any link juice, link equity to it if it's a, a follow link. And so that's another thing why it's important to basically go back and fix any potential 404s, especially from backlinks, which are still pointing to old um, old pages that may not exist anymore. Maintain SEO. So search engines don't like broken links, period. Uh, they The more 404s you have, the more of a negative um, kind of impression you make on them. So websites with too many 404s can actually be penalized by those, by those search engines um, and hamper the search engine's ability to crawl the website efficiently because what happens, they'll grab a link, they'll try to follow it, it flags a 404, and then that's a dead end basically in the maze. And they can't crawl it effectively, especially if there's no um, sitemap on the site. Avoid losing traffic. So if a visitor encounters a 404, they might leave and never come back to the website because it was a bad experience. They might look for the information elsewhere. So this means also losing a potential customer or backlink because if you have a backlink that has pointed to a page that doesn't exist, that used to exist, but now doesn't, um, the site owner could remove it. And secondly, it's not gonna pass any link equity to a page because there is no page to pass it to. So again, it's important to redirect those old ones. Protect brand reputation. So uh, it's important to create an un to create an unprofessional. Protect brand reputation. So these 404s they create an unprofessional and rely unreliable experience for the users. It affects the brand image and the reputation, the credibility. And fixing the 404 errors actually builds trust with your visitors because 
they, they know that when they click a link, it's going to work and it's going to lead them to the place they intended to go. Ensure accurate analytics. So 404s can cause inaccuracies in analytics trackings, uh, such as increased page views due to users refreshing the page multiple times um, or inflating the bounce rates uh, and all of that. So that's another reason why we want to fix those 404s as soon as possible. So how do you actually find 404 error pages on your website? Um, you would use a website crawler. Um, if you use a dedicated crawling tool um, or a platform that crawls your website like Hike SEO, um, it will identify any 404s that need fixing on your site. It'll show them, uh, it'll show you where it, where they are, and then you just need to go in there and fix them. And we'll cover exactly what you need to do to fix them. Um, using Google Search Console, another great tool, absolutely free. If you use Google Search Console, any 404s or soft 404s will be automatically flagged in that system uh, within the coverage section under the index um, button. So you just go there and then you'll see all your uh, potential 404s if you have any. So here's a little screenshot um, and basically um, you'll see here um, there's five affected pages and you can just go in and fix them and you'll see below if you scroll down what those pages actually are. Using broken link checkers. So these tools specifically check for broken links on your site. Uh, so you can use uh, something like um, W3 validator check link tool. So you can put in your URL and then basically you'll check for any broken links on that page. Uh, you can use deadlinkchecker.com, another great tool, and you can use brokenlinkcheck.com. So how do you fix a 404 not found errors correctly? Firstly, you would create a redirect of the broken URL to point to new working URL. So before you do this, there are two important considerations that you need to keep in mind. So firstly, which redirect type should you use? So there's two types, each with their own purpose. Actually, there's more types of 301s, but these are the two most common ones. So 301 are basically permanent redirects and 302 are considered temporary redirects. So 301s I would use in 95% of circumstances simply because they pass on the link equity, the link juice from the old page to the new one. Um, not all of it, but most of it. And this you would use in circumstances where the old page will never ever be online again and you're simply redirecting it permanently. 302s are used in those situations where you literally have a page that is going down for maintenance temporarily, but you need to redirect because there's a lot of traffic coming to that page and you're temporarily redirecting to another one. And then you would take that off and it goes back to normal after that maintenance. So I would use 301s in most circumstances unless it's a maintenance thing and the old page will come online again. So secondly, which page should you redirect to? So if the new page is the same, but with a different URL, then the redirect is simple. You just redirect to that new page using a 301. Now, if there's no exact alternative, then the goal is to find the next best match in terms of topic, page, function, or topic. So the topic of the new page should match as closely as possible with the broken link page topic. Okay, so that's really important because let's say you have um, a thousand pages and you have like two or three pages that are quite similar to that page and you pick the one that matches the closest and you redirect that to it, at least the user comes to something that's relevant to what they're looking for. If there's no exact match or close match to it, then redirect up to, let's say, a subcategory page or category page, or worst case scenario, redirect to the home page, but that's last resort. So the parent page is basically a page in a hierarchy that's above that page. So it could be a subcategory page, it could be a category page, uh, etc. So let's say we had a page um, slash learn slash SEO in 1999, and we unpublished that. Um, then the parent page to redirect to would be slash learn if there's no similar article or page on that same level. So next is the personalizing your 404 error page. So 
it basically enhances the user experience if it's personalized and doesn't just go to like a blank page um, because that just looks boring and it, it doesn't fit the brand and all of that. So this customized page can include elements of humor if you want and or helpful prompts or alternative links that people can go to just to redirect and guide them in the next most relevant way. Um, a far, it's far better than a blank unhelpful 404 page. We've all had them. They're boring and they're unhelpful and you just don't know what to do next. So here's some examples um, of different types of personalized 404 pages just to give you some inspiration. So that's a really nice visual one, kind of funny as well. Here's another one, um, which is really cool, like nice background. Uh, here's a kind of funny one with a little... Um, comedy sketch here um, so yeah and then using hike and 404 errors so in hike you can actually uh, use the action engine which automatically flags up any 404s on your entire site and when it flags it up it tells you which page has the 404 error and then you can go on there and go to your website your CMS redirect that and then complete the action so it's really useful it's really simple to use. It does it automatically when you first um, go on to hike and hike crawls your site. It will flag these as actions in the action engine. So thank you so much um, for watching. If you have any questions about 404s, do let me know. Um, and if you haven't tried hike yet, please sign up. Uh, it's a fantastic platform for beginners, uh, for agencies who serve small, medium businesses and for those small, medium businesses who really just want some um, help and guidance um, and don't really know SEO that well, but want to feel empowered to make those changes themselves. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.